So, now we will uh, talk about Lagrangian, Hamiltonian. So, these are called functionals. Okay. Uh, why it is called functional? This is the next slide. So, Lagrangian is function of functions, right. When you say Lagrangian of a particle, it is function of x position of the particle which is function of time and x dot t, right. This is you done in mechanics. So, Lagrangian is function of position which is function of time. So, x of t is a function, right. This is standard school text, school function, what you studied in schools. But Lagrangian is not a function. Lagrangian is function of x, which itself is a function of time. Okay, so these are called function of functions, or is called functional. And it is in the standard notation is f, not as not a small bracket, but a big large bracket like that. Okay, so this f is function of functions, which is f. And it is not one function, it is kind of any arbitrary function we can choose. Okay. So, one example, so several examples I will just illustrate. So, we have a functional, a functional, this is functional, f capital F is a functional, okay, which is integral 0 to 1 f x dx. So, whatever f x I insert, I will get a number. Okay. So, normally for functions, we insert uh, uh, like time value of time, but here you insert the full function. Okay. Now, insert f of x and I get a number. So, f of x let us say I put x to the power 4 this function, then what will I get? So, I put x 4 dx which will be x 5 by 5 and answer is uh, 0 to 1 which will be 1 fifth. Okay. So, I get a number of course, but it is it value is, is answer its value depends on the function function I insert. So, this guy is accepting a function as an input. Second function is, so this is a functional, it inserts, it takes the function and also a argument x, okay. It is a machine which is taking a function, but it says well it has a some parameter a knob and knob is x and it gives you value of the function f at well at x okay so the definition of this uh, this functional is this this function f f of y delta y minus x dy okay so i need to get is a filter function okay this is a filter function so it gives you value at x which is a knob you can change of course now to take, but its input is is small f function and you can easily see that uh, uh, this integral will give you f of x right uh, and this is because it is property of delta function. So, this is f of x ok. So, there are huge amount of uh, uh, algebra we can do with this uh, this new thing called functional. Now, I again I will not dig deep into this, but I will just use it for whatever we need ok. So, I need to define variation principle or I need to state it and that is what uh, we are going to use functional for it ok. Functional derivative. So, we know how to do the derivative of a function d f by d x or d f by d t right uh, uh, is tangent right, uh, but here there is no I mean no, how is a functional. So, I cannot define a tangent. So, how do I define a tangent of a function? So, the idea the definition I think you have to be careful is this definition is is rigorous definition. So, this is standard Newton's idea or Leibniz idea of uh, function deriv derivative of a function right f x plus epsilon minus f x by epsilon for any function f of x at this point I want to take a derivative I just take two points which are close by and and do it. For a functional derivative I ok. So, I, let me put uh, the definition. So, this is a functional f ok. It takes this argument f. So, so I take the difference of two functions, two functions ok. So, uh, because the function it this capital F takes function as an argument. 
So, it takes g is an argument and small f is an argument, g is a function and f is a function, but g is a slightly disturbed function, slightly function which is altered from f by a small amount and how much is that uh, deviation it is this epsilon delta x minus x prime. So, g and f are very close, but at at x okay, at x I have a delta function and is multiplied by epsilon, epsilon is small. So, delta is a big delta is a blip no big big it goes infinity in fact. So, I multiply by this by epsilon and uh, this is the difference. Okay. Now, I am going to use subtract capital F G minus capital F F. Okay. So, now let us uh, substitute it here F will be involving F x prime plus epsilon delta x minus x prime this minus f of f x prime ok and this divide by epsilon limit epsilon goes to 0 ok. So, uh, this guy will give you a, a number and this guy will give a number and of course, it will be proportional, proportional to epsilon and you divide by epsilon and that is the answer ok. So, let us illustrate by some examples. So, my one first functional is integral 0 to 1. Now, I want to uh, compute this uh, functional derivative at x naught ok. So, I just substitute so by definition. So, I create a new function g of x which is this function f x plus epsilon delta x minus x naught no. So, I am wanting to compute at x naught and subtract it with uh, this guy. So, difference will be what? This will cancel with that epsilon in fact will cancel and you get a delta function integral and delta function integral will be 1 not always when x naught is within 0 and 1. So, if x naught is within 0 and 1 I get 1 else 0. So, that is the answer of this derivative of course, the value of the function I told you how to compute it is just integral, but if you want to take a derivative this is what it is. Normally, so far what you might have done is just well if I take a derivative of this with uh, um, delta f by delta f. By the way, please keep in mind that this delta is not this d, dx by dt like this d is a derivative, this is called functional derivative ok, delta this delta is a functional derivative it has meaning which is given by this definition. Now, as it works, but that is a lazy way to do it. If I want to take a derivative here, then I just simply go inside and take a derivative ok. Uh, then you will get uh, basically you may guess it will be 1 right uh, for the integral. So, that is a lazy way to do it, but uh, uh, this is the definition ok. Example 2, slightly more complicated example. Uh, this is uh, f x to the power n phi x prime d x prime and this should be x prime here okay. d x prime ok. Now, we get a number now with this, but this is a auxiliary function phi x prime. Now, the derivative you can I will not do the algebra, but uh, uh, same idea I add a delta function uh, epsilon delta function here do all this algebra, but finally you will get this functional derivative of this functional is this uh, you, you may make a guess that ok you will get n uh, f x n minus 1 uh, phi x. Uh, you, you might make a guess no I mean this is uh, I need epsilon delta x minus x. Now, I when I do this n uh, f x prime plus I do the Taylor expansion ok. When I do the Taylor expansion I will get the leading order term to be that the one cancellation and the next term which will be non 0 will be this term and you do the delta integral and you will get this ok more examples. So, this is a math. So, I thought I uh, will give these examples, but uh, I taken all these examples from this book called quantum field theory for 
gifted amateur lancaster lancaster and uh, blundell okay so this is the book if my functional is like that function of function okay this is g f f of x so then uh, uh, the functional derivative is g prime f x now some of it you can just uh, use as a formula uh, you do not need to derive it all the time we, okay this is the formula a uh, derivation you can refer to that book and uh, uh, g f x prime f prime okay so now this g f f x g f f prime uh, this is a minus d by d x terms uh, it comes because of we do integral by parts so uh, this for this functional the derivative is that i have an example so uh, imagine the functional is f prime x squared okay and i ask for functional derivative of this functional then what which formula should i use i should use this formula a derivative function of a derivative so then minus d by dx dg dg f prime by f prime now this is you take the derivative of this which is 2 f prime and uh, d by dx of that will be this okay but then i am going to use it very soon for particle lagrangian so this look like uh, and useless math but it is not we will just going to use it uh, very soon for particle dynamics okay now this is the kinetic energy now we are already getting into particles so kinetic energy of a particle what do we write half m v squared right v is x dot so half m x dot square by 2 but for functional derivative i need an integral you know so you better write in terms of integral so uh, we make average kinetic energy in a small time domain. So, 0 to tau dt prou dt prime of half mx by dt. So, I create a new variable t prime and I integrate it in that domain. Okay. This is exactly same to that same as that when you take the limit tau going to 0. Fine. So, what is the functional derivative of this? So, I define so by the way keep in mind that this kinetic energy is a functional this can the, at least this one why it is functional because i can get a number for any x t in standard mechanics we write x dot we use x dot as a number but x dot is not really a number x dot is a functional because x t well x t is function of x is function of time but when i say uh, kinetic energy then i say this square so this is function of function okay so it's really functional so t is a functional and i define a functional derivative of this with x okay and what is what is that so remember the formula uh, we had uh, uh, f prime g of f prime this is a already a derivative squared so i last example i just did that so uh, if you have g of f prime then the derivative is functional derivative is minus d by dt of delta g by delta f prime right that was the uh, sorry let's look at it this this is formula 2 f prime by dx now here prime will be d by dt okay so in that formula i'll get d by dt of 2 d f is x so dx by dt the minus sign okay so that will be minus 2 x double dot so that's a second derivative of time so this is what we got second derivative of time and this half will cancel 2 and this 1 by tau and mass is here so this is the functional derivative of kinetic energy with x okay mx double dot okay so we can get euler lagrange equation by uh, from lagrangian of course this will be one ingredient in that formula okay so 
let us look at particle in a potential. Okay. So, principle of least action. So, we define Lagrangian. It is a crash course on particle dynamics. I will finish in 15 minutes, but uh, uh, we will use in terms of functional derivatives. Okay. L is T minus V and I am going to define T as a what I did in the last slide. Uh, integral well I am not divide I should have divided by T, but well we will ignore right now. So, this is average kinetic energy minus average potential energy. No, sorry, yes, sorry no, no action I am defining action apologies. Action is integral L d T T 1 to T 2 right that is action. Okay. And what is the principle of least action that particle chooses a path for which action is mid, uh, extremum. Okay, so, that is what we are going to use. So, first we define the action and action is well, well is L integral dt. So, it is T minus V. Now, I am going to call this S1 and this called S2. Okay. This is extremum that is the principle of least action. It could be maximum as well, but normally it is minimum. Okay. Now, we have done this. Uh, so, how will I write in terms of functional derivative? S is a functional, right? So, I write delta S by delta X, this should be 0. My function is X, which I am varying particle trajectory. It could be particle is so if you plot X, you plot it is this path, or it could be that path, or it could be that path. Okay. And classical trajectory is one path for which action is minimum. This you have done it, but I am just stating it uh, again. So, I need to uh, write, so basically delta S by delta X is 0, that means delta S1 by delta X T plus delta S2 by delta X T is 0. Uh, these are functional derivatives, so I use delta, not partial. Okay, so this part we already done it. Delta S one, this is minus m x double dot. Okay, there is a limit tau into zero, but uh, we we don't need to worry. This is uh, m x double dot. Okay. Now, what is this uh, uh, functional derivative of this one? Here it is function of x only. So, this g of f integral okay, d of x, uh, here the derivative is simply g of g prime of f. We did that in a previous slide. So, that is why I say v prime of x. Okay. I am using the formulas and now the sum of these two must be 0 because it is extremum. So, this is 0, this is 0. So, that gives us m x minus m x double dot minus v prime is 0. So, that means this. Okay. So, this is for a particle in a potential. Okay. Uh, this is standard derivation, but I think uh, I am not, this is a rigorous derivation in terms of functional. I am not sure how it was done in 401, but uh, this is more rigorous derivation. Okay. Now, I am going to also get to Noether's theorem. Okay. So, Noether's theorem is, uh, so I will also show you uh, how we can exploit this uh, functional derivatives to get to more complex uh, physics. Now, this derivation is from this website, uh, Kevin Brown. It is an interesting website, okay, the math, mathpages.com. Uh, there are lot of topics are covered in a nice way. I am of course, we are going to change the trajectory. So, I am right now I am only using particles right, we will go to fields uh, after this discussion, but for particles I have x t you no know, x of t. So, this is t and this is x. For functional derivative we need to change the trajectory. So, I am following this uh, website, I am going to write this epsilon delta 1 t. Okay. Uh, this is a general small function, it is not a delta function, but I will just adopt this notation, it is a function. 
but epsilon is in front so it is small function okay it could be a blip okay at uh, uh, okay so we have just imagine this to be a small delta 1 to be a function is a perturbation on x so this by a perturbed trajectory and i will say my delta s by delta x this would be zero so del delta it so uh, here we are we may have a more than one particle so we particle level is i okay so uh, i can change the trajectory for any particle Okay, so I define the action dl by dt and take d by d epsilon. Okay, so this action I want to minimize it. So one way is to just take the derivative with epsilon and set it to zero. Okay, so uh, L is Lagrangian is function of x and x dot. So we will have delta partial L partial xi and partial x uh, dx by df epsilon plus partial L partial xi dot. There is a dot sitting here and this dot here. Okay. So this function of x and x dots. So I need to take two partial derivatives okay, for every i and some or all i, some or all particles. Okay. Now this beta of algebra. But when I took the, they do the epsilon, the, this is what I get, okay, xi. Now, this is uh, in can't remove, okay. No, this is uh, this should be zero. No, we want uh, this uh, action to be minimum, so this, this should be zero. The, in fact, this is just uh, this statement. Now, well, there is one difference that this one. This derivative, what is delta x i by del, 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 delta epsilon? That will be delta i. No, because if I take the derivative with epsilon, I will get this delta i. So I get delta i here and delta i dot, this delta i dot. Okay. You have to just bear with this algebra, but I think you will get something interesting after this. Now we have one variable delta i here and here is delta i dot. So what should I do? idea is to convert delta i dot to delta i so that I can combine them and that is where I get Euler Lagrange equation. So I use by parts, this part I am going to use by parts, okay. so this is done here. So this first function integral of second, first function integral of second which is that minus derivative of the first function d by dt integral of second. Okay. In fact, this is standard derivation. Okay, I'm mean, I'm just re redoing it. This should be zero, right? When the, the, this statement is equivalent to that. Now, for derivation of Euler-Lagrange equation, what do we do? We are varying this xi with this delta. What is the constraint on this deltas? For Euler Lagrange equation? Exactly, end point must be fixed. So, if we fix end point, then what happens to this, this, this integral? It goes to 0 and we get this to be 0 and this 0 for all delta i's as long as end points are fixed, that means inside this guy should be 0, right. For arbitrary delta i should be 0, that means the integrand must be 0, okay. That is the argument which is given. And that is the Euler-Lagrange equation. Delta is endpoint, and we get this. Okay, great. This derivation, all of you know, and excellent. Now, what if delta is not zero at the endpoint, but is arbitrary? It's possible, no? And that's where Noether's theorem come. Noether is a, a famous lady. In she wrote this paper in 1916, and to just to know. Uh, the background women were highly discriminated and she was in she did not get a position okay, in the university. She was doing as a assistant of a in fact Hilbert first and later she got some temporary position. Anyway, this is a very famous theorem which was uh, uh, which is used everywhere okay. But for particle Lagrangian I am just going to state it. If delta is arbitrary 
but you need to keep the Lagrangian unchanged. So, I ch change my uh, delta, my x is changing, but I have to constrain that my Lagrangian should be unchanged. Okay. So, for example, uh, uh, okay, if you are Lagrangian like half, in fact, I am going to give the example in a minute x dot square plus potential. Okay. Now, this Lagrangian is not function of time, explicit function of time. Right. So, uh, if I change time to time, uh, time plus epsilon or time plus something, uh, is this Lagrangian is unchanged. Okay. So, uh, for two particle uh, potential which is 1 over r minus r prime, right? this potential for two particles. So, we will have two kinetic energy terms particle 1 kinetic energy, particle 2 kinetic energy plus potential energy. This Lagrangian, well I said minus no, minus V x. This Lagrangian is unchanged if I change the coordinate shift, uh, shift the coordinate axis, right. Because R and R prime both are shifted by constant number, so it is unchanged. So, Lagrangian is unchanged by many, many various combinations. So, imagine that I do some change in my, uh, my coordinates so that Lagrangian is unchanged. Then what can you say about the which quantities are conserved, okay. So, that is what is now the theorem. So, it turns out we have delta i's which are arbitrary, but they are not changing the Lagrangian. So, we go back again to this equation which we derived. This should be 0 because Lagrangian is not changed. Now, of course, delta is not 0 at the end. So, this function is not 0 by Euler Lagrange equation of course, we assume that this uh, Euler Lagrange equation is of course, uh, respected followed. So, this is 0 okay, by Euler Lagrange equation. So, I had to get I will get this. Okay, so, delta L by delta x i dot multiplied by delta i is constant. Okay, so, this is a conservation law. this is going to be constant during the evolution of the system. Okay. Now, I will illustrate by examples okay. that is where you I think it will become clear and this is called Noether's conservation law. Okay. Now, of course, we want to uh, get some you want to again simplify that uh, that equation. So, idea is uh, so let us look at some uh, examples. So, uh, again we will work with 1 d and uh, 1 d with uh, n particles, but I assume that potential is function of x minus x i minus x j ok it is a separation. That means, if I shift my coordinate system by a constant value then my Lagrangian will not change right because this will also shift by a and this also will shift by a. So, my Lagrangian is unchanged by coordinate shift. So, this is called space translation ok. So, here I am shifting all of them. So, this delta i will be is a shift no. So, that will be um, delta sigma. I am making a change no. So, x i prime actually is x i plus delta sigma. So, this is delta sigma ok and it is same for all in the sum. So, that will come out ok and when it comes out is basically that. So, when it comes out then I will get this this sum, this sum is constant x i dot I am sorry apologies this sum is constant not for individual because each particle is shifted by a constant amount and this is the total momentum of the system right. So, this is m i x i dot where Lagrangian is x square minus potential v x i minus x j sum over this is sum over all i j this sum over all x i i's right. This is a Lagrangian my I hope you can see my handwriting is probably not too good, but okay. Lagrangian is kinetic energy of all the particles plus potential energy 
which will involve two sums. Well, you can put a factor half not to double count. Okay. Now, this when I do the derivative partial derivative with xi dot I will get contribution only from that which is this is a total linear momentum total it is a total linear momentum and that is constant not individual momentum because individual momentum will change no with uh, with uh, because of interactions okay and this is what you get from noise theorem and this is uh, one example i mean of course you can derive more things so this for 1d you can do it for 3d now 3d well um, this is i don't need for this course but just for completeness we define a generalized coordinate qi which has xi xj xi yi zi is a thing so the qi is 3 and 3 times n when n is the number of particles okay now is very easy you can do it just follow the same logic but now i can vary xi independently yi independently zi uh, zi independently and then we basically put a coefficient in front kx k y k z they are not equal now these are semi coherent and then for so basically from this derivation which you can do it uh, easily space transition along x y along z all are independent so you get three conservation laws linear momentum along x linear momentum along y linear momentum along z and this kx and ky basically are arbitrary in fact they, so it follows that uh, uh, this kx multiplied by linear momentum along x this is along x direction while along y direction along z direction that's constant okay so it's a nice norm and you can derive this formally you don't need to apply any uh, physical arguments is mathematical and uh, you can derive this space rotation is very similar so i my shift of the coordinates idea is to model this okay so uh, i have n particles when i rotate about z axis rotate about z axis okay z cap then what happens to x and y so uh, you can just verify Uh, the dxi is d sigma yi and dy is minus d sigma xi okay so this is a this d sigma is d phi is a mutual angle okay for a small angle this is what you will get so cos theta i sin theta and so you will basically get this one so my d sigma is the parameter and this dz uh, is zero so i just substitute it here and uh, what i get is here uh, so this one will give i give us mi xi dot mi yi dot and so xi dot is multiplied by yi and yi dot is multiplied by minus xi minus xi and what is this guy xi dot yi minus xi yi dot angular momentum so this lz okay so lz is constant multiplied by mass so Uh, r cross p so this is constant third one which is slightly more complicated is uh, time translation okay is not complicated but you are just you do it is not following the same logic but slightly different so this is equation dl by d sigma okay so this is change in l no the delta l is we we had written and we set this to zero but i will say well i don't set it to zero but uh, uh, i well when i change my by parameter sigma then i get dl by d sigma right hand side is dl by d sigma okay don't set it to zero and then i rewrite that as a uh, like that and well basically choose sigma as time okay so we we are rewriting this equation and um, d by dt l minus the sum and what is this object is hamiltonian no this is hamiltonian so hamiltonian is conserved and this is this is in fact very important uh, assumption in this okay that l is not function of explicit function of time right this is not coming in our equation so l is independent of time is not explicit function of time so the potential 
has no time dependence. So, potential between two particles which is gravitational potential it is not function of time. So, for those systems energy is conserved, but if you have an oscillator which is forced by electric field which is function of time then energy is not conserved okay. So, this is the assumption. So, that is why it is called time translation. So, time now or uh, that system energy now or Lagrangian now or 2 hours later will be the same Lagrangian okay that is a time translation. Okay, so, this is uh, uh, conservation law in fact uh, from symmetry. So, these are symmetries. Huh? So, symmetry first symmetry was space translation then I said space rotation time translation and there could be other symmetries. Okay, so, I just gave the obvious ones uh, for fields we will do some more symmetries, but for the particles we will just do the three main symmetries. We can derive conservation laws um, and uh, okay, mechanics of Landau is a good reference. So, there are many many references, but uh, you can look at the website as well the one which I cited and that is a good derivation.